Who's ready for another Christmas card? Today we're painting the third in our series of Christmas cards featuring pets wearing Santa hats. What's more perfect than that? So today we're painting a beagle dog with Santa hat and the most adorable smile on his little face. I have a line drawing right here. I did the drawing ahead of time on printer paper and then I digitized it, made it a line drawing for you guys to download for free. Check out the link in the description so you can grab your free PDF files and paint right along with me. Other supplies you'll need today are a water jar, some paper towel, a a watercolor brush. I'll be using my silver black velvet size 8 round brush and a tiny liner brush if you want to add little details like whiskers at the end. For that we'll be using our Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white. I've got my palette and my six colors on my palette are yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, indigo, turquoise blue, and cadmium red light. Five of these six colors, everything except the red, are my favorite selection to use for pet portraits. If you want to learn more about how to choose the perfect colors to paint your pets from any reference photo, download my free 24 page ebook guide. I'll leave a link in the description for that. So what else do you need? I have my Arteza 140 pound cold pressed cotton watercolor paper cards. I was delighted to see that there are actually cotton watercolor cards out there and these are working great so far for this series. If you can't find those anywhere, the Strathmore watercolor cards are also a great option. They make great watercolor paper. It's one of the best watercolor papers that's not made from cotton. So those are also an option. So if you're ready to go, let's get started. I have a little bit of transfer paper right here I'm going to place on the card. Also double check to make sure that you can open up your card correctly. The first card I painted, this is what I did. So always double check before you commit. Make sure that your drawing is centered on your card and that the placement is exactly where you want it for your final painting. And then take your pencil and trace it right on. Right, so once you've got your perfect drawing ready to go on your Christmas card, you can grab your brush and get started with the painting. Another quick thing I want to recommend that you have would be a waterproof pen. When you add an outline, it looks so cool. It looks like an illustration. It gives it a finished look. So I'm going to be using my Pentel. It's a dark gray waterproof ink brush pen. It's got a nice brush tip on it, which works great for these. So that's what I'll be using at the end to outline the whole painting. All right, but for now, let's start with the hat. We're going to begin with turquoise blue and a little hint of indigo and mix the two up in a nice watery mixture. And with that, we're going to do a first layer at the base of the hat. Leave most of the hat pure white, just the white of the paper. But to help the hat feel rounded and shapely and soft, adding a slight hint of blue, a cool grayish blue for the shadow of it, helps it really stand out. And then you can add that same color to the underside of the little ball. If you download my reference image below, you'll see that it's really just a roughly photoshopped image with a hat just cut out and pasted on the image. And when you do the painting, it looks a lot better than a photoshopped image like that, in my opinion. So that's why we have some advantages as artists. We can make things look better than photographs in a lot of cases. I'm going to add one more little wash of blue here boosting the color again. And it doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth line all the way across. You can make it kind of come in and out, almost like the soft edges of the fabric folding. So it's okay if it's a little bit jagged, not totally perfect. Okay, next we're going to grab our cadmium red light and paint the red of the hat. Swirl it on your palette ahead of time. Make it a nice creamy consistency. And this, you want to be real careful with this red. It's a, it's a brilliant staining color, so be careful not to drop your brush. I totally did that while I was practicing and had to start over. <laughs> Don't do what I did. So just painted a solid color all within your pencil lines. Dip in the water if it's just not quite flowing for you, but dip without removing all the paint. You're just wetting your brush slightly so that the paint releases just a little easier onto the paper. And often with cold pressed textured paper, you'll run into the issue of your brush just kind of catching on the surface. So that one little movement, just dipping the tip in the water will help remedy that for you. Okay, I'm gonna rinse that out and then actually grab some indigo and mix it with the red that's on my palette. 
This is going to create a perfect color for the shadow tone in the hat. So we're just going to add a little crease, helping the hat look like it's just folded over itself, like that, giving it a shadow tone. So just like we did with the white part, now it actually feels like it's got some depth to it. All right, we don't have to do too much more with that. You can just leave it like that. Let's go ahead and start our first layer on the dog. We're going to begin with yellow ochre. Nice watered down version of our yellow ochre. And paint that all over the ear. Areas you want to avoid with your yellow will be just the center of the face where it's white and the eyes for now. There's the side of the neck right here. You can cover that with one layer of yellow ochre and the cheeks, of course. So paint just right up underneath the eyes. And then right in the center of the head, mark the center point and leave a little white stripe right there. And then fill it in on either side with the yellow ochre, just avoiding that little center stripe that you painted. You can use your yellow ochre under the mouth, around the tongue, around the jowls. So we're just doing a nice flat wash right now, getting down some color. If it touches the red, you might see it bleed into your painting a little bit. That's okay, just let it happen. But this is really representing everywhere on the dog that's going to be tan and anything darker than that. Sometimes the hardest part is just knowing how to even start. And I always recommend starting with the lightest color that you see. And in this case, it's this light tan. We'll just do a light layer of that where I see some hints of yellow color on the underside of the mouth and around the nose. Okay, so there's our first wash. It looks really flat right now. Not quite up to the same sort of color and value that we see in the dots, and we'll get there. So next we're gonna go for our burnt sienna and water down slightly. We don't wanna go too dark too soon. So mix in a little water and we'll start on the left side, which is already dried by now, and paint the crease of the ear. There's a little flap of the ear that's folded over and we see it catching the light. So let's paint around that. It almost looks like a string of spaghetti. So you're creating that crease. And then I'm actually gonna mix in a hint of ultramarine to make the color more of a gray and paint that between these two creases, the outer edge of the ear and the inner edge of the ear. And connect it all around the bottom of the ear, then remove some on the paper towel and soften the edge of what I just painted. Grabbing some more burnt sienna and painting that towards the top of the ear, letting it touch that grayish brown. Grabbing more. And then if I want a darker color, I can take more pure burnt sienna, a little bit of ultramarine, and create a chocolate brown. And with that, I can really darken up the inner ear right here. Yeah, and already this ear is looking so much more refined, so much nicer. Dipping in the water, and I'm gonna pull that color all along the neck. Now the underside of the head is not gonna be pure white. We're gonna give it some color, just like we did with the hat. So let's take a little hint of indigo, mixing in plenty of water, and we'll just paint the white fur under the head a soft, subtle bluish gray. So we don't want the fur here to look pure white because it's the dog's neck and it's in shadow. The head is casting a shadow over the neck, so not pure white. But then you can take your burnt sienna and touch that right up next to what you just painted to encourage a soft edge right there. You can do that on the other side as well. Painting right next to the soft gray, letting the colors touch and blend naturally on the wet paper. 
All right, so let's keep moving across the face, gradually increasing these values, adding more burnt sienna. So this burnt sienna is our second layer. I'm going to mix in a little more yellow ochre with the burnt sienna to create an orangey tan. We'll use this to paint under the eye. Just the darker mid-tone shapes that I'm seeing in the reference photo. And above the eye. And this little eyebrow shape right there. So cute. That's what gives it that smiling beagle face. Removing some of that and then softening my edges by swiping along the wet paint. Try not to press hard. You don't want to lift the paint off. You just want to soften the edge. And we'll paint along the side of this cheek the smiling cheek. And around the underside of the mouth. I'm going to take more burnt sienna in its purest form and apply that here next to the eye. No extra water in your brush or it'll kind of explode out as you've seen. Reinforcing that little eyebrow shape and just darkening it up. As you work, you'll start to notice that your layers dry lighter. And so you'll often need to go back where you just finished an area and darken it again. Sometimes that can be a little frustrating, but just learn to embrace it and go with the flow and just keep painting. It may look ugly in certain phases of the painting and that's okay. That's totally normal. It's just part of the process. See it through to the end, even if you think it's not going to turn out, if you completely have written it off in your head as a failed painting, just, just keep going, just finish it, and you might actually surprise yourself. You might decide that instead of hating it, you absolutely love it. That's happened to me before, and I'm sure it's happened to you too, so just keep painting. See it through to the end. All right, now just because I want a quick win with this painting, the layers look really strange and I want it to start looking more realistic. So I'm gonna add the nose and the mouth, the black parts of them. I'm gonna use the indigo for that. A great way to get a quick win if you're feeling discouraged in your painting is to just add some defining features. It's gonna help really make it look a lot better and quickly too. So I've mixed up some black using burnt sienna and mostly indigo. And I'm going to paint in the black nostrils using a circular motion with my brush. Like that. They're quite wide. Large nostrils. And they go pretty much to the edge of the nose. Then you can use your black to redefine your lines in the outer line of the nose, the shape of it. And then you see a distinctive center line coming all the way to the tongue and an anchor shape <laughs> outlining the nostrils. Leave those little highlights just below the nostrils. That is something you will almost always see on a dog. There's a little rim of light just beneath the nostril. Now I remove some of that so I have a slightly lighter value on my brush and I dry it on my paper towel so that I'm not introducing any excess water to the painting. And can remove even more and I soften underneath the nostrils and help spread out this dark gray to completely draw the shape of the nose. And you can kind of scrape your brush across the top of the paper so that it leaves tiny little ga gaps or highlights there representing the bumpy, shiny, wet texture of a dog's actual nose. And already this is looking so much better because our dog has a snout. Hooray. So then let's add the mouth. We'll outline the wide open mouth. It's in the shadow. Because this is an illustration, it's okay if we use more outlining techniques for this. Don't feel like everything has to be blended out into nothingness. And we see this black shape where the mouth is smiling, curving around to the left and to the right. And there's one little tooth right here. Paint around that little tooth. I think it's so cute. And the little gums. I'm going to have to mix up some more black, so I'll use again my indigo, hint of burnt sienna for a rich, creamy black. 
and we'll continue painting the strong shape of the smiling mouth as dark as you can go then there's this little crease right here dipping in the water to get the paint to flow again All right, I'm going to remove most of that so I have a lighter gray in my brush and grab some burnt sienna and paint the shadow side of the face leading up to the ear crease. So one long swooping line right there with a dark brown. So it's a combination of burnt sienna and indigo or burnt sienna this time. Rinsing, removing, softening. In my little study, which is so much smaller than the one I'm painting here, I was able to get away with less detail because it's just so small. There's only so much you can include in one like that. And there are actually advantages to that. So, I mean, if you want to work smaller, you could certainly shrink the line drawing smaller and create tinier little cards. And then you wouldn't really have to worry about details at all. Right here I'm adding some yellow ochre burnt sienna in a nice mixture and continuing to move across the face. Now that we've added the nose and begin the mouth, it's looking so much better. So hopefully you're feeling a little victory right there. I'm going to dip and remove some of that, soften it out. So now I have a lighter value on my brush and I continue to pull this layer across the head, spreading out the paint. going to take some more of that yellow ochre burnt sienna and outline the underside of the eye. Rinsing and removing. I want to make sure I leave a nice bright highlight showing this big cheek flap coming out. It's so cute. It's really showing the smile on the dog's face. So that's an important mark. And then some more burnt sienna to paint this little flap along the ear and then I want to mix in some more blue to create a gray again just like we did on the left ear and leaving a streak between the flaps like that. I'm actually probably going to spend a little less time on this one. When we go in with our marker and darken the outline that'll help shape the ear even more. Okay so now I'm going to take that indigo black mixture but add some water and coming back to the snout we're going to add a dark gray. It should look like there's this dark shape coming out and away from the nose and extending its spider legs out almost with these whisker pads. But this, the whisker pads, these lines along the muzzle should be very light, not too dark. Can take a hint of burnt sienna and add some brown to that to help it look even more natural. And now for the inside of the mouth, grab some more black, color that all in really dark, along with the center line in the tongue. So you're creating this murky diamond shape, kind of a sideways diamond. And then take your cadmium red, mixing in a little bit of ultramarine. So it should produce this sort of pinkish, murky pinkish color. We'll use that for the tongue. And we're going to paint around a little highlight on the left side of the tongue. Just watch out for that little tooth that we're painting around as well. And then you can drop in some more bright red, pure bright red here at the tip of the tongue and just let it soften into the wet paint. Okay, a little more ultramarine in the center of the tongue. I'm kind of fanning it out towards the outer edges. Grabbing more black for the inner mouth. I want it to be so dark in there. 
And then we can complete the shape of the tongue by painting the black all around it. Make sure the tongue is dry before you do this. You can also do these finishing outline details with your waterproof marker. That's definitely an option and I'm probably going to be doing some of that as well. He's so cute! All right, the last thing is the eyes. So mix up some more of your black using indigo, burnt sienna, lots of rich, creamy, juicy paint on your brush. We're gonna add a little hint of the white of the eye just because I think it looks so cute. Gives it some more of a playful sort of bagging expression. So I've left this little highlight right there. And then one more important highlight is the one on the top of the eye. It's a circular highlight right here. So paint around that. Then I'm actually going to take some pure burnt sienna and complete the shape of the eye right here using more of a pure brown just for some color distinction within the eye so it's not just a flat black. And with that brown still on my brush I can go ahead and start the other eye the same way beginning with brown. Well I guess not the same way but sort of a backwards approach. We'll begin with the brown and then we'll do the black. So rinse that out, grab your black. You wouldn't even necessarily have to rinse it out, just go straight for your black. And carefully draw the other eye on. So the drawing isn't ever completely done with your sketch, you're still drawing with paint. And so it's important to keep track of where your highlights need to go, keep track of what the tip of your brush is doing, make sure it's maintaining a nice round point for you. And then again, just avoid this little highlight at the top. Leave some of the brown there that you painted around visible. Oh, so cute. I'm going to widen the top of this eye slightly to match the one on the right just a little better. Yeah. And then while I have that dark color, I can exaggerate the shadow under the ear and on the other ear as well. Although our marker brush could probably do this too. We'll add one more dark layer to the center of the muzzle. Wow, we have that on our brush. That looks so good. There's the finished painting portion. Let's take our dark color and outline. I'm gonna set this aside so I'm not dragging my hand through my wet paper towel. And we were, we're just gonna outline everything. We'll outline the hat first, since I know for a fact that that's already dry. And when you outline the underside of the head, it's almost where a collar would be cutting it off naturally. And it looks like a sticker cutout. It's so fun. Really looks like an illustration. We'll outline the outside of the mouth as well. And you can reinforce the shape of the tongue with your dark color. just helping us make better sense of the drawing overall. And then last is this ear. Work slowly and carefully and keep readjusting your grip on your marker. There we go. Okay, one last thing is going to be to add a couple little whiskers. So grab your Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. You can dip your brush in some water to get it flowing easily for you. But have a nice thick amount on your brush. And with a tiny little liner brush, just add a couple little white whiskers to your beagle. You can even add teeny little ones coming towards the center of the face right here. This to me is just the perfect finishing detail for a painting. It's when you get to add the whiskers on a pet portrait. So fun. It shouldn't be stressful. If you have a nice tiny brush and a good product like this, it'll work great. So I'm going to add a couple little tiny ones here above the eyes as well. 
One last thing, I know I said I was done, but I think I wanna add a darker shadow to the hat. So I'm gonna mix up a tiny bit more of my bluish gray and just darken up our shadow again under this little ball too. Yeah, that looks better. Yes. <laughs> There's our finished beagle. If you got through this whole tutorial with me, well done my friends, that was great, good job. We have one more left in this series, so stay tuned for our last kitty cat in a Santa hat, and I'll see you there.